going to open up prayer, and uh, then we'll get started. Heavenly Father, I'm so, I was so thankful for what a great church, and what a great body of believers and servants, and we get to do so many things together that are neat, where we connect with the community, and yesterday was one of those, and you gave us wonderful weather, and for all that, God, we are thankful. We lay all other things before you today, whatever is troubling us, whatever's on our heart, God, we just put it before you and just ask that you would be helping us with these things and giving us the answers we need. Guide us as we take a look into your word. Help us with that. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be looking in Matthew chapter 13, switching over from the Old Testament to the New Testament today. And one of the things that I had done this last week, and I'm sharing the story in way of an analogy, but I had a problem with my eardrum, and so they put a tube in it because I, it filled with liquid, eustachian tube dysfunction, that kind of stuff. I didn't understand it either until it happened to me, but it uh, doesn't matter. I didn't hear well, so they put a tube in it, let's say four years ago. Tube comes out, so then the hole usually heals and it didn't. So the doctor told me after he went and they patched it that it was like 40% a hole, like of my eardrum, and that's one of the reasons I wasn't hearing. And then they took... Uh, bone cement, whatever, whatever those little bones are that pound, beat on my eardrum, they, uh, they put cement on that. So it did help, you know, for the, for the time being anyway, right? It, it helped me, and, and I definitely appreciate it, but the issue is not someone's voice per se. The issue is not the words they say. The issue I've been having is my ear. That's the issue. So Jerry, I wasn't really not listening to you. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I think she wondered. She would say, you're not even listening I said, that implies active decisions. You know what I'm saying? Let me hear you first, then I'll actively not listen. You know what I'm saying? We'll go that way. No, I'm just, just No, I just, it's, it's frustrating for her. It's just, it's just not her voice. It's just my ear. And when it comes to our heart, our heart's the ear for God's voice. And it's not the truth that's the problem. It's not. It's us. It's the heart. There are times we're just not listening to what the truth is. And so that's the story that Jesus Christ is going to relate today in Matthew 13, 1 through 9. Hear these words, and the challenge again is to open up your heart to God. So that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and Birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns which grew up and choked up out the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. 100, 60, or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let him hear. You got ears? Hear. Is the call of Jesus Christ. If you got ears, you can hear what I'm saying, hear it. For us, in our hearts, as God speaks, the one thing that we've got to do is we've got to be listening. You feel that tug? You feel that conviction? You feel God speaking to you? That's a time we need to be paying attention because part of listening, obviously, is our heart. God's talking. He's talking all the time. Are we hearing him? So some things about truth I'd like to learn from this passage and share uh, one is this, just keep it simple. I love the fact that Jesus Christ is teaching by a lake. He's talking about a simple story. It's farming. Anyone could get that. You plant seeds, things grow. It doesn't have to be complicated. The spiritual truth doesn't have to be complicated. He said he taught him in a parable, and a parable is a story with a spiritual meaning. It's not, like he's talking about stuff. Hey, somebody went out and planted a seed, and this seed fell on this kind of soil, and this kind of soil, and this kind of soil, and this is what happened to it. It's not just about farming. It's about spiritual truth and our connection to it. And how are, is the person hearing and what's our response to the word? And I liked how it's just so everyday and so relatable as it should be. It's like the blind man who Jesus Christ healed him. And they were asking him, well, you know, tell us about this. He said, well, I don't really know what to say other than this. I was blind and now I see. That's profound and that's powerful and that's simple. Yeah, I was, man. There was a time, there was a moment... I was blind, but I can see now because of Jesus, right? There was a time when I had an anger issue. <laughs> now, man, God's given me peace. Give me patience, right? It's simple, truth, communicate it. And so God's truth, what we find with it is it leads to change. There's no 
point in hearing God's word if it's not going to impact our lives, if it's not going to encourage us, steady us, strengthen us, direct us, help us better live for God? What's the point of it? Jesus Christ is preaching for change. He's not preaching for anything else, right? In Matthew 4, 17, from that time on, Jesus Christ began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The stories of Jesus Christ are not given just to entertain. Right? It's not so he could be popular. He's not out to make us feel good. He's just out to help us. Like, this is the areas of our lives, you know, we need to address whatever he's communicating it in our time, to our heart. And Jesus Christ communicated in everyday layman's terms. Planting seeds in a field is 100% relatable. This is not spiritual truth turned into quantum physics or equals MC squared or something you got to be Einstein to understand it. Spiritual truth can just be simple. It shouldn't need a degree for it to impact our lives. Truth should be like an apple. We eat off a tree. It just does you good, right? You don't have to think a lot, per se, about why it does. It just does. It's just simple. Pull the apple off, the fruit of God's word. Apply it in your life. Jesus Christ, he pointed to all kinds of things. Birds of the air, flowers, mustard seeds, water, sheep, shepherding. Common stuff that everyone would understand every day. And my encouragement is this, as we communicate God's truth, we just keep it simple and relatable so the person doesn't feel like they need a black belt in theology, spiritually speaking, to understand what in the world it is that we are talking about. It's every day. And I find that in the days of Jesus Christ, they readily overcomplicated things, the religious leaders did, and they did that by adding a lot of rules that God didn't say. Now, I've seen that happen at times in churches where you be in church and they're like, oh yeah, you don't come to church and you got the black and white of God's word, but then there's rules on haircuts and rules on movies and rules on music and rules on dancing and rules on all kinds of other stuff. And I found as I was younger in Christianity and I'd gone through college and I'm starting to think about this stuff, I'm like, but that's not what the Bible said. Like, why do I? I always try to say it this way. If God doesn't thus say it, then neither do I. If it isn't thus said in Scripture, then I'm not going to say it because we got enough to be dealing with right here without me putting obstacles between a person and Jesus Christ. And some add these long and confusing corridors in the name of spirituality. For why? I've always resisted this. And I'm saying for years I have, and I don't see it happen that often, but once in a blue, I'll see it. It's what I call like add-ons. It's like, you got the word of God, but I'm adding on. Yeah, you know, you need to pray, but you got to pray like this, and this kind of language, and so on and so forth. And I'm thinking to myself, why is that? Is that what God said? You know, you complicate, hey, listen, here's a prayer. I wrote a whole book on it. I shouldn't need a whole book on praying. I'm not opposed to books on praying, but you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a certain style of pray, pray this way, and I've got to go through chapters and chapters and chapters. The Lord's Prayer is pretty simple. Hey, God, hallowed be thy name. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, right? As we forgive those who trespass against us or sin against us. Simple. Just pray. Talk to God. Let's not be overcomplicating Christianity, but keeping it simple. Then if we want to impact people for change, we need to be in the normal places where people are. And I do appreciate those who have hobbies and whether it's go to the gym or coaching. And that, that's a great way to be relatable and just to... Talk to people where they're at, meet where they're at. Jesus Christ is on a fishing boat, and the reason he's on the boat, the crowds crowded him so much, he was on the beach, but he had to get in the boat just so he could talk to them because they just kept wanting to touch him and be around him, and I'm sure healing and all that kind of stuff. And he got in a boat, and he's just talking to them, but man, he's just in this everyday place, a beach. Again, talking about farming. And so we, we look at all the things. Jesus Christ, he's in the trenches with everyone else finding common ground. And aren't there things in humanity, church and unchurch, church, community, things that are just important across the board? Like what? Well, love and acceptance. I would throw those two out there. That's important. It's all of us. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter if you've been in church your whole life or you've never been in church or today's your first day in church. Family's important. There, I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Family is super important. Your children, you live long enough, you get grandchildren, I would assume great-grandchildren later on. I mean, all that is super, super important to you. I would believe that certain things that everyone's interested in, cheaper groceries. How about that? 
That's something probably everyone can relate to right now, is just the expense of everything when it comes to food costs, whether you're at a restaurant or you're at the grocery store and what the costs are and how much inflation we've gone through. That's something, oh yeah, all of us relate to. Any Browns fan wishes the Browns would do better. <laughs> Any Browns they're, fan, they're wondering what in the world is it with this organization? Like, how could we be so consistently bad? Constantly, it seems like there's just a struggle. Yeah, we all, we all relate to topics like that, whether it's food or nature or the northern lights or any of it. It's just things that we think are beautiful. We, just, we all think that, right? Now, when it comes to spiritual truth, it's the same. Just like there are certain common ground things, there are certain common ground things that God talks about, like the need of forgiveness. That's something that impacts every single one of us. Everyone, look, everyone needs strength. Everyone needs direction. Everyone needs help along the way. And God has answers for us, and that's the beauty of it. So every day, simple things of God, like love God and love others. Not complicated. Right, God? I'm going to love you, and I want to love others. That's a simple truth. Um, I like be happy and do good. Ecclesiastes 3.12 is a guiding verse in my life. Just be happy and do good. You know why I like it so much? It's simple. And I thrive on simplicity. Just simple truths. Truths. I don't want any million things, just simple things. Be happy. Do good. We have eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. Everybody. Everyone can have heaven through what? Through faith in Jesus Christ. Every single person can have a home in heaven. I love it. So many things. Everyday truth. Ask and you'll receive. Hey, I need answer to prayer. I need help. Good. What is what Jesus Christ said? Ask and you'll receive. Simple. Not complicated. So when we, dealing, when we are dealing with truth, let's just remember, hey, let's just keep it simple. And there's another thing with truth. You've got to stick with it because there's a consistency in this story. There's consistency with the farmers, the same guy. Every soil type, one farmer. Every soil type, one seed. Every soil type, same method of planting. Every soil type has the same dry, same rain, same weather pattern is going to hit all of those seeds the same way. All of that's 100% consistent. And so when we look at certain things, we need to speak the truth consistently. The farmer gets out, he broadcasts the seed, but he can't control what happens to it once it's out there. Like he's going to put it out, but he's going to consistently do his job. The same is true with us in spiritual truth. We just have to communicate now, if there's not a farmer, and this is true in American life right now, I mean, if we didn't have farmers, where would we be? If you don't have people raising beef, creating, right, milking cows, growing produce, where would we be, right? I mean, you absolutely have to have farmers and people planting these things, or we'd be in a lot of trouble. Thank God for them. You absolutely have to have people communicating truth, too. It's absolutely indispensable. Jesus Christ said, how are people going to hear without a preacher? Right? How are they going to respond to a message unless they hear? How in the world are they going to hear without someone telling them? So our job is indispensable, actually. We've got to be able to communicate truth, and I'm thankful that we do, not only on Sunday morning, in our adventure clubs, in our youth groups, in Celebrate Recovery, in small groups, in all ministries associated with the church. What are we here to do? Communicate truth. I feel that's such a huge role of this church. It is such a huge role as us as Christians. Man, just communicate what truth is. We must be getting out there. And I think about all the things that God has given us. He's given us the universe. He gave us the word. He gave us Jesus. He gave us the spirit. He gave us the church. He gave us all kinds of ways where we're looking at truth and can learn truth. All kinds of ways. So, man, we're connecting with God. God is constantly, constantly, constantly communicating, constantly sending truth out there. Farmer reaches in his bag, throws it left, throws seed right, throws seed left, throws seed right. You don't think God's out there pitching truth all over us all the time? You don't think so? I think he is. I love this passage. Here are these words. It's found in Deuteronomy 30, 11 through 14. And we find there this, now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. Not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend to heaven and get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it? Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will 
cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it. No, the word is very near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. You don't have to go a bazillion miles to find out what the truth is. It's all around us all the time. We just need to proclaim it and teach it. That's our job, right? Teach it in your home. Teach it in your family. Make sure your kids understand what truth is, right? Have chances to talk to friends. Conversations come up. You get chances to communicate. I'm not one who buttonholes people or forces things down their throat, but if you give me an opportunity, I'm out there talking to you and we're hiking or something like that, conversation comes up about this issue or that issue, something going on in the Bible, I'm, I'm happy to talk about that kind of stuff at any time. Just My job's not to, re, to control how they respond to it. It's just to speak the truth in love, right, and get it out there. Now, here's another thing that I learned. You've got to do the right thing consistently. You've got to believe that doing... If you keep doing good things, good things are going to happen. Honestly, I don't, I don't care what area of your life you're talking about. You could be talking about exercise. You could be talking about diet. You could be talking about how you treat your spouse. Good things tend to lead to good results. And so my job is I got to do what's right, and I have to do it consistently. The farmer, he's just got to keep planting. And he's got to believe as I keep planting and doing that, good things are going to happen. Now, let's say that, you know, in your marriage relationship, something's like, I don't know, stress, let's say. You're not as close. What I recommend doing is do the, do, you do the right thing. Because that can never hurt, right? Just do the right thing. Do the right thing. And sometimes you'll say, man, I was so nice today, and they were so mean to me. You know, they were so grumpy anyway. What was the point of being nice? Honestly, like, what was the point of it? I'm nice to them, and look how I got treated. Don't look at that interaction alone, all right? Just know this. You keep planting good seeds, you're going to get a good harvest, no matter what. And so we've got to invest into praying. We've got to invest into learning, studying, all these kind of stuff. Invest into it. There's a principle that I would say is generally true. You will reap what you plant. Plant tomatoes, get tomatoes. Plant corn, get corn. Generally speaking, you will. Now, do I think it's 100% true? Well, I mean, if you take some of the short-term stuff, like farmers who were planting where Hurricane Helene came through, I wonder what those fields look like right you know, after that. Or Milton comes across Florida, I'm wondering what those fields look like after that. Because at that point, they might, you might argue there, well, they plant it and they're not going to reap a harvest. You look at Job in the Bible, that man did a lot of good things, a lot of good, right? But what happened to him at the end of the day, he still suffered, right? And you can say, he can say, well, man, I strengthened people, and I helped widows, and I did all this great stuff, and I still suffered. Yeah, no doubt. Life's not always 100% even. I'm not saying that every time you do a good thing, there's always going to be a good result. But what I'm saying is this. You consistently do good things. Just like this farmer is going to consistently plant, there's going to be a crop. In Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we'll reap a harvest if we do not, what? Give up. Now, I've found as a, at times in my life, and now more as a hobby, but once in a while I still get out there, I'll buy and sell stuff, and, and I like doing it. And you know what, you guys and gals, I've had some good days, and I've had some bad days. And I've had some bad days that I thought were good days. I thought it was good. I thought it was good when I was going on the truck. I thought it was going to pan out. And there are things like, to be honest, like I don't make money on everything. Sometimes I've got some losers, and I've said this to my wife many times. But the same thinking that led me to buy to that thing that I lost on is the same thing, the same type of thinking that has led me to buy a lot of things we did well with. It's the same thinking. So I take the same thinking, the same process, the same patterns, I apply it consistently, realizing this, yeah, not in every case did it pan out, but more often than not, it does. The same with the seed of the gospel that they're spreading. You know what? They keep planting it. Does it mean that every single person they talk to, something good happened? No, not every time. But overall... Yes. Overall, it's winning, right? Overall, there's going to be a harvest. And so I've got to think about that. So you've got to wonder for yourself perhaps right now, you know, where are you discouraged? It's like, yeah, I'm so discouraged. I feel like I'm planning. I feel like I'm just not getting anywhere. It's not paying off all my hard work. Don't give up, guys. Don't give up, cows. This farmer kept at it. And there was a crop because of it. And i got to remember, as I've already mentioned, I don't control all the results. I mean, it's God's Word. There's different kind of soil types. It's the same seed, same farmer, same process. Different results. I don't control that. Sometimes I realize that what I'm doing is injecting the truth into the veins of a person, spiritually speaking. 
what happens after that happens. You, you hope it pans out. There's good that comes of it. But I've got to wait sometimes. I've just got to sit there and say, okay, I injected the truth. Now I've just got to wait and see what happens with that truth. So don't be intimidated by that. Just say, no, you know what? I, I'm the one. I've got to inject the truth. I don't control all these results. Now, disciples, they asked, why did he speak in parables? And he told them, well, the reason is because it's for you to know the secrets of the kingdom in verse 11. And knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom is given to you, but not to them. And I think, well, that's sad. Right? Isn't that sad? You read the Bible that God hardens people's hearts? What's that all about? Here's what I've found is I've thought about it many times over the years. God never takes anywhere, anyone, anywhere. They don't want to go. And if someone's got a hard heart, they chose it. Look at these verses that he quotes. Because I wondered about this. I'm like, yeah, but you're saying it's for them and it's not for the other people. And, and he, so Jesus Christ quotes from Isaiah. And it says, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. And this is like in a context of Isaiah having a great vision of God. And Isaiah chapter 6 is like amazing. And then, hey, I want you to go. You know, who will go for me? I'll go. And he goes, well, here's what you're going to encounter. You will be of the people ever learning and never understanding, ever seeing, but never perceiving. How sad is that? Always learning something, never really understanding it. Always seeing stuff, not really getting it. For this people's heart has become callous. It didn't start out callous, but it became callous. They hardly hear with their ears. They've closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn. And I'd heal them. Because if they repented, I'd heal them. Because that's the way it works. Man, we repent, we come to God, God heals. But here's what these people did. But they shut their eyes. That's what they did. Do you understand? That's what they did. They are the ones who closed their eyes. They're the ones who dulled their ears. And so for us, one of the ways that we can do this is when God talks, we just don't listen. Listen. When God talks and God speaks and God communicates, Make sure that you are listening. He's going to constantly be telling us the truth. And we've got to open our hearts to it. He starts to explain this parable now to them. And in verse 18, he goes, listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message. So what's the seed? It's the message about the kingdom. And does not understand it. The evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. And this seed was sown along the path. So here's, here's how they would farm, all right? You got paths crisscrossing Palestine, and people walk the same paths all the time. The more they walked it, the harder the, the earth got. And this ground is so hard. Well, the farmer, I doubt that the, the guy broadcasting the seed was actually sowing the seed on the path, to be honest with you. But I think it just fell out there. You know, as he was pitching it one way or the other, there's still some fell there. He did hard ground. And it never penetrated. The seed never penetrated. It could never germinate. It could never go anywhere. This would be like dropping a tomato seed on a paver patio. It's just the birds are going to come and eat it. This person's heart's hard. Why? Here's how you harden your heart. God speaks, you don't listen. 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 And after a while you've, it says in the Bible, you literally sear your conscience. There's things you, you did and God spoke to you you felt bad about it. You don't even feel bad about it anymore. Why? Because you just stopped listening. And it's a dangerous place to be. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And that's exactly how we do it. At other times, people you talk to is just pride. They're so pride. They're just not teachable. And because you can't, they won't be taught, they won't learn. It's almost like there's nothing you can say. And maybe you've been there, by the way, trying to talk to people, and you know after, after a while, there's no point. Usually when I find like people aren't listening, I do shut up. Like I just, there's no point in me really saying a whole lot more at this point. I mean, you don't really want to listen. You don't really want to hear it. It's a sad thing to detect that. But I'm not intentionally trying to sow the path, but the times I'm talking to you, I might find out, oh, your path, like your heart, you just don't want to hear. And I hope that's none of us today, that our hearts are way more open than that. And then some hearts are uncommitted because what happens is the seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. Wow, is this great. You went with a message to somebody and they were like, yes. Yo, Jesus Christ, you talked to him. They believe in it. You think it doesn't get easier, right? You know what I'm saying? They believe it, except that Jesus Christ, they prayed this is awesome. Yeah, but for some of these people, they're not committed to it. They liked it. You know what I'm saying? This is shallow soil, let's say two inches of topsoil of a rock. That root tries to go down, 
There's nothing to go down to. It's rock. As soon as it dries out, it's done. It's like you buying those plants, and I, I buy them all the time. You, you buy packets of flowers or tomatoes or peppers. You bring them home. You know what I'm saying? In those little plastic six-packs? What happens when you forget the water that they are so and they're out in the hot sunshine? Some are goners. Like, I try to revive some of those I forget about. It's like too late. It's like I try to get them in right away as soon as I can because I know they are not going to make it long without continual water. This is the heart of people sometimes. And the heat and the sun and the shallowness is the trials. They're just not committed to it. Yeah, first is great. Oh, wait, God will help me with my marriage? Wonderful. God will help me with my business? Wonderful. God will give me eternal life for free? Wonderful. God will forgive me? I feel like a heal the things I've done. God will forgive me? Wonderful. It's great and they embrace it, but they don't stick with it. They just have no staying power. And one of the things we learn in the Bible is this. Man, you've got to be committed to it. And you can't look at it on the short term. You've got to look at it over the long term. And once you, as Jesus Christ said, you put your hand on the plow, you don't look back. You start with Jesus Christ, stay with Jesus Christ. Don't stop. Don't let the trials get the best of you. Everyone's going to have trials. Everyone's going to have hard times. You are not alone. If you today feel like, man, I started following God, I started going to church, and I've had nothing but headaches ever since. You're not alone. You know what I'm saying? Everyone has that kind of stuff. Just keep at it and make sure that you are 100% committed. I think of Job as one of the greatest examples. He took the good and the bad. And, man, did he get the bad side, right? One thing about Job, he always believed in God. He said, God, even if you slay me, yet I'll trust you. He wanted to talk to God. He wanted to know why he was going through it. He had a lot of questions for God. He never gave up believing in God. And what Job found out is you can't measure life over the short term of what you're going through right now. Not all of life. There are going to be good days, there are going to be bad days. Sometimes we're in a bad turn. I don't want to throw out God because of that. And Job never throw, did not throw out God because he was going through a hard time, and neither should we. And these are the things that test us, right, to say, do we really believe? Am I really trusting the Lord the way I should or not? And then some hearts are distracted hearts. In verse 22, the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. All of us can relate to weeds in the garden, okay? Like all of us. You plant a garden, and a lot of times, man, I've had these big gardens. I'd plant all kinds of sweet corn back in the day and stuff, and not so much the sweet corn, but any kind of squash, sometimes tomatoes, peppers. You get about to August, and you're doing so good. Like May, you're pulling weeds. In June, you're pulling weeds. You got the hoe out and all this stuff. July is getting a little iffier. You know what I'm saying? Like by August, like sometimes, like, where do the weeds start and the plants start? Where's everything? And pretty soon it's starting to choke it out. They didn't start big. Those weeds don't start big. They start small. We just didn't keep after it. And a lot of times this busyness of life and the wealth and the allure of it, sometimes the greed, sometimes desire for whether it's pleasure or popularity, it started out kind of small, but it got bigger in your heart. And your heart got distracted with many things. And pretty soon you weren't paying attention to God. He's not a priority anymore. And what happens to the Word of God? He's trying, what, the great things God's trying to do with you, you just become unfruitful because you're so busy with a million other things. And by the way, who can't so easily of us get caught up in this? Like what I'm talking about is something I think every one of us relates to it. As we relate to busyness, this is a busy world. There's a lot of stuff going on. And, and it's not that we intend to ignore God or not read our Bible or not pray and that kind of stuff. It's just like it happens, you know. And that's where, again, my soil, right here in my heart, I've got to be paying attention to it. Hey, am I still cultivating that? You know what good soil is to put plants in? It's cultivated soil. I don't typically throw tomato seeds on my lawn. You know what I'm saying? The grass. I know nothing's going to come. It's not cultivated. It's not dug up. It's not turned up. I've got to be turning things up. Sometimes in my heart, it's the same. And then some hearts, they're receptive hearts. It's just good soil. It said that some seeds falling on the good soil refers to someone who hear the word. They understand it. And this is the one they produce a crop 160 or 30 times what is sown. Why? It's a good heart. And it's good soil. And you know it's good soil because their lives are changing and they're bearing fruit. Is that us? Or is our heart open? I heard from a man. I had just met him. And he's telling me all about his church. Right? And man, I've been through four years of discipleship. Four years of leadership training. All this. Tell me all about it. But I can never do what you do. Be a pastor and all that. 
because uh, <laughs> he's talking about how immorally, immorally is, does drugs. And I'm thinking to myself, what kind of discipleship was this again? That they never ever covered like deny yourself daily, take up your cross and follow me? Did that never come up in four years? Like it actually matters how I live? What is the word of God about? Change. Man, we can talk about the Bible, you can know it as well as can be. But if there's no change, if there's no evidence, man, it is not good soil. Good soil. Fruit. Good soil, you're going to see love. Good soil, you'll see kindness. Good soil, you'll see service. Good soil, I imagine you're going to see peace too. That would be all kinds. It would be the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Right? The love and the joy and the peace and then the kindness and patience and goodness and self-control and stuff like that. Like, we're going to see that. We're going to see some kind of evidence in our lives. Are our hearts open to change? John 1, 12, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Now, there's something we need to re receive, right? Anybody who receives Jesus, you believe in his name, you can become a child of God. Is our heart open? And my daughter, one time, I planted plants in her backyard because there's just nothing growing but weeds. So I tried to turn the grass, get it out of there, put lilies in, come back next year. Lilies are dead. Lilies. I didn't know there was soil that a lily wouldn't grow in. That's the honest to goodness truth. Like, lily is such a tough plant. I put the toughest, hardiest plants that I know to personally exist in the back of her house, and they're dead. That soil, I told her, this soil is awful. And I'm not going to plant one more plant there for you until I get the bropes and get some of their compost, get some of their topsoil, and mix it in there. Because there is no point in ever planting anything in that soil. Because there's nothing good that's ever going to happen to it until I change out that soil. So I'm going to have to add to that. And be careful doing it too, because I don't want to affect the water flow behind your house. Some way, some way, I, I've just got to change it. Because nothing's going to grow if I don't. Man, if there's nothing growing here, <laughs> if we're not growing, if we're not bearing fruit, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a hard issue. And it's not about the Word of God's not good enough. Or his voice isn't strong enough. It's about us. Where are we at today? Let's stand as we close this time in prayer. Dear Holy Father, I just pray for the challenges. And I've been thinking about this. You know, don't be a hearer of the word. Be a doer of the word. And all, all these things, God, you know, we, we just need, I need to, we all need to be challenging ourselves. God, are we living the way you want us to live? Are we just hearing? Are we just hearing and not doing? Are we, God, are we hearing your voice? Help us. God, I just pray if there's anywhere we need to be convicted, convict us. If there's somebody who doesn't know Jesus, I pray today they believe in Jesus. It's that simple. It's simple truth. God, bless this church. Bless the congregation. Bless all of our servants. Uh, bless them with a great week this week. Bless our families. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.